Okay, so now that we're in Scratch, the first thing I want to show you how to do is create a new project. So you're going to click on Create. And then before we even do anything in the project, we are going to give it a title. So for this one, I'm just going to call it Lesson 1. You can call your title anything that you'd like because it depends on what your project is about. Giving your project a title uh, enables you to save it in a way that you can find it quickly. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. If you click on File and you click Save Now, your project will save. And then if you click on this, where your username is, and you click on My Stuff, all of the projects that you've created will show up in this space. And you'll see my lesson one project is right here. So I'm going to click on lesson one, and that's going to take me right back to the project that I just created. And in order to get back into the space where you can edit the code behind your project, you will click on see inside. Now, once you finish a project, this is a great space to end up because it's where you can add instructions so you can explain to other users how to play their how to play your game here. And you can also add notes and credits if anybody helped you with this project or there was something that you wanted to share with people about it. You can add those details here. So we're going to click on see inside in order to edit our project again. So as you see, it still says lesson 1 up top and you'll see my cat is here and I haven't started doing anything yet. I haven't started programming. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, our blocks. So I know that you might be a little bit familiar with the motion, looks, sounds. These are all of the different categories we have to use to program our game or our story, whatever it is that we're making in Scratch. Now, as I told you last time, Events is the most important tool, right? This is how we start any line of code. These pieces are just like puzzle pieces, and if we do not have an event to start a puzzle piece, then it won't run. So we need to make sure that we have one of these starter blocks. And for this activity, we're just going to add, we're going to drag the when the green flag is clicked over. So that'll mean when the green flag is clicked, anything that is connected to this will occur. So now to start, I'm just going to add in move 10 steps. So if I click on the green flag, my cat will move 10 steps forward. Pretty basic. Nothing crazy yet. But what happens if I decide I want to mess with my backdrop? Oh no! My blocks disappeared. What happened? Where did my code go? Don't worry. Your code is still here. It is just saved with your sprite. Each line of code you write in Scratch is going to go with the character or the item that you are programming. This is called object-oriented programming in the big people world. So for us, you just have to think about it like if you were writing a story, your, your script to, to the play you need to label who has to say each line of the play. So for our purposes here, our cat knows now that when the green flag is clicked, he has to move 10 steps. But our background doesn't need to know that. That doesn't affect our background. That just affects our cat. You'll also notice that there's no motion blocks if you're clicking on motion and you're clicking on backdrop. That's because our backgrounds can't really move, right? They're just the background behind everything else that is happening on your screen. So you'll notice that there are blocks under looks, and there's event blocks and some control blocks, but a lot of these blocks, if you look through them, are different than the ones that you'll see when you look at your sprite. And they're all really useful, and we'll go over that throughout other times, but for today, just note that your code didn't disappear. It's just attached to this character. So now, if we were to add a backdrop, let's just do the blue sky. Our code still stays with our cat. 
Now, if we were to click on costumes, this shows us the different ways that our cat can look. This is something we're going to talk about in our next video. Have a great day!